Imagine standing before a mirror that doesn't just reflect your face, but the past itself. A mirror not made of glass, but of polished gold. Its surface shaped with such delicate precision that it can collect the faintest light ever born, the first whispers of the cosmos. When you look into it, you don't see yourself. You see time itself, stretching backward, into a universe still learning how to exist. That's what the James Webb Space Telescope was designed to do. To let humanity look back toward the moment creation first opened its eyes. But when Webb looked deeper than any telescope before it, what it found wasn't simplicity or stillness. It found contradiction. It found impossibility. It found a universe that refused to follow the rules. For generations, science had painted a confident picture of our cosmic story. The Big Bang, not an explosion in space, but of space. Then, a long darkness lasting hundreds of millions of years, before the first stars ignited, before matter began to cluster into the galaxies we know today. The farther we looked back, the simpler things were supposed to be. Scattered hydrogen, chaotic dust, no structure, no order. But when Webb turned its golden mirrors toward what should have been an empty patch of night sky, something extraordinary appeared. A galaxy, not a faint blur, not a primitive cloud, but a fully formed system of stars, spiral arms, and even a black hole at its heart. A galaxy that shouldn't have existed so early in time. It wasn't a newborn. It was mature, luminous, structured, alive. And it wasn't alone. As Webb continued to observe, more ancient galaxies began to surface from the dark. Each one older than expected. Each one impossibly advanced. It was as if the cosmic timeline had skipped billions of years, jumping straight from chaos to creation. Astronomers were stunned. If the universe had rules, these galaxies had broken them. How could so much complexity exist only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang? It was like planting a seed at sunrise and finding a forest by nightfall. Then came the next shock. Spectral data, the light fingerprints of these galaxies, showed something even stranger. They weren't made only of hydrogen and helium, as theory predicted. They already contained heavier elements, carbon, oxygen, even iron. But those elements take time to appear. They're forged in the hearts of massive stars, and spread through space only when those stars die in supernova explosions. That cycle takes hundreds of millions, even billions of years. Yet here it was, already complete, less than 400 million years after the beginning. The early universe wasn't crawling forward. It was racing, burning, collapsing, rebuilding itself in record time. The timeline wasn't just fast. It was broken. And then came something that seemed outright impossible. At the center of one of those young galaxies, Webb detected the signature of a supermassive black hole, more than a billion times the mass of our sun. By every known model, that's absurd. Black holes grow slowly, over vast ages, by swallowing stars and gas. Yet here was one already fully grown before galaxies even had time to settle. Some proposed exotic origins, maybe these were primordial black holes, formed directly from dense regions of the infant universe. Others suggested dark matter might have accelerated their growth but none of it fully added up. The data seemed to whisper that our understanding of time, gravity, and formation itself might be incomplete. Then, deeper still, Webb found something unexpected, patterns. The galaxies it observed weren't arranged randomly. Their shapes, spacing, and rotations followed repeating ratios, echoes of natural geometry seen in seashells, hurricanes, even DNA. Was this coincidence? Or evidence of an underlying cosmic order? A kind of hidden code woven through the structure of reality itself? And then came a discovery that blurred the line between chemistry and life. 
In the cold space between galaxies, Webb detected traces of complex organic molecules, not simple gases, but carbon-based compounds that form the foundation of amino acids. They weren't bound to any planet. They were drifting freely through space, older than stars, older than Earth. If that's true, then the seeds of life weren't rare accidents. They were present from the very beginning, embedded in the blueprint of the universe. Life, perhaps, isn't an afterthought. It's a consequence. But even that was not the final mystery. There was one image, one that left even the most rational scientists silent. When Webb turned its gaze toward a faint region of space, billions of light years away, it captured something that seemed almost intentional. Six galaxies, perfectly aligned around a central core, each one orbiting in graceful symmetry. Their distances equal. Their motion synchronized. Together, they formed a pattern that defied chance, a celestial mandala, a cosmic flower blooming in the dark. Astronomers searched for an explanation. Could it be a trick of light, a result of gravitational lensing, where massive objects warp the fabric of space, bending light into illusions? Could turbulence in the early universe have sculpted this shape by accident? Or was it something else entirely, a geometry so deliberate that it felt like a signature? Some whispered that maybe this was no coincidence. Maybe it was an arrangement waiting to be noticed. A pattern placed in the sky not for the first stars to see, but for the first consciousness capable of asking why. Because that is what Webb truly is, not just a machine of mirrors and gold, but a bridge between knowing and wonder. It doesn't merely collect light. It collects meaning. And what it's showing us may not just be the universe as it was, but as it chooses to be when we finally look. Then came the question no one wanted to ask aloud. A question that shakes the foundation of science and philosophy alike. What if the act of observation changes what is being observed? Quantum physics has hinted at this for decades, that particles behave differently when measured, that reality itself seems to respond to awareness. But what if that principle scales upward? What if it applies not just to electrons, but to galaxies? Not just to atoms, but to existence itself? What if, by constructing the James Webb Space Telescope and daring to stare back across time, humanity didn't just uncover the past, but touched it? What if our observation rippled backward through time, folding consciousness into the cosmic equation, rewriting what we thought was history into something far stranger? Because when you peer deep enough into reality, perhaps you don't just see creation. Perhaps, creation sees you. Maybe, in some unfathomable way, the universe has always been waiting for eyes like ours. Eyes made from the same stardust that first ignited in those ancient galaxies. Eyes capable of perceiving not just matter and energy, but meaning. Webb hasn't simply revealed ancient galaxies or colossal black holes. It has uncovered something even more profound, a subtle awareness, echoing through time and space, whispering through the very patterns of creation. Perhaps the universe is not a lifeless machine, but a conscious system, thinking, remembering, evolving through its observers. Maybe we are not outside of it, studying from afar. Maybe we are the universe, studying itself. The galaxies were too advanced. The chemistry, too rich. The black holes, too enormous. The patterns, too deliberate. The molecules, too alive. Each discovery was a reminder that reality may be far more than physics, it might be participation. That to look into the depths of time is to awaken something that was always there, a connection between mind and matter, observer and observed. James Webb didn't just open a new window into the cosmos. It opened a window into truth. A truth so vast and ancient that to glimpse it is to feel the universe breathing through you. Maybe what it found wasn't the beginning of everything, but the memory of everything. A record written not in words, but in light. 
A memory that stretches across eternity, waiting for us to remember it. And perhaps, just perhaps, when Webb stared into that infinite reflection, the cosmos looked back and remembered us.